Hi everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video I'm going to show you how to draw and label reaction profiles for both exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. Now whether we're drawing a reaction profile for an exothermic or an endothermic reaction we always start off by drawing the two axes. Along the bottom we have progress of the reaction, in other words as time goes on and the chemicals are reacting together and up the side we have energy. We know that exothermic reactions give out heat energy to the surroundings so as the reaction progresses the chemicals are going to give off energy and their energy level is going to decrease. So we can see that the energy level of the reactants is higher than the energy level of the products. And sometimes this is an exam question. They will show you a reaction profile like this and say, how do you know this is for an exothermic reaction? And your answer would be, the energy level of the reactants is higher than the energy level of the products. But when we're drawing these diagrams, it doesn't simply go straight from there to there. To understand the shape of these diagrams, we need to understand what's going on with the molecules when chemicals react together. To help you understand what happens when chemicals react together, I'm going to show you these molly mods, which I really like. And these are available from the Philip Harris website, and there's a link to the website in the description below my video. Let's look at the example of hydrogen and oxygen reacting together to make water. Here's the molecular formula. We've got two hydrogen molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule to make two molecules of water. And we can see here the displayed formula showing the bonds between the atoms. And with the molymods, I've got two hydrogen molecules here with chemical bonds joining the hydrogen atoms together. And we've got an oxygen molecule. We can see there the double bond in the oxygen molecule. Now for these to react together and make the two molecules of water, we have to first of all break these bonds so that the atoms can rearrange themselves. And breaking bonds is an endothermic process. We have to put energy in to break those bonds. And that energy that we put in is called the activation energy. Once we've got the atoms separated, they can then rearrange to make the new product, which is two molecules of water. So new bonds start to form between the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen atoms. And when those new bonds are forming, it releases energy. It's an exothermic process. So when the chemical ha reaction happens from start to finish, two things happen. First of all, we put energy in to break those old bonds so that the atoms can rearrange. And then when they do rearrange to form the product, those new bonds form and that releases energy. Returning to our reaction profile, this is the shape that we get. When we put in that activation energy to break the bonds between the reactant molecules, then what happens is the energy level increases because you put in energy into the chemicals. Then as they form the new bonds and give out energy, their energy level is going to drop again down to here. So make sure you remember that when we're drawing these diagrams, first of all it loops up and then it begins to drop. You also need to be able to label these reaction profiles. The first label we're going to look at is the activation energy. Remember, it's the energy needed to break those bonds in the reactants. So it starts at exactly the same level as the reactants and goes right up to the very top. Don't make the same mistake that I saw many times on exams when I was an examiner, and that is people hurriedly put the arrow somewhere there without it being exactly the same level. So you wouldn't get a mark for that. It needs to start exactly where the reactants are and similarly go all the way up to there. The other label you need to be able to put on is the overall energy change, which we can also call delta H. And the overall energy change is the energy level from the start to the finish. So it goes from the reactants to the products. So make sure you can draw and label this exothermic reaction profile. When we draw the reaction profile for an endothermic reaction, we need to remember that endothermic reactions take in heat energy from the surroundings. So if they're taking in energy, their energy level is going to increase. So we've got the energy level of the reactants lower than the energy level of the products this time. Here's an example of an endothermic reaction. 
where two molecules of water are split up during electrolysis to make two molecules of hydrogen and a molecule of oxygen. So just as with the exothermic reaction, the first thing that has to happen is we need to put energy in to break those bonds between the atoms of the reactant molecules. So this is the exothermic part, putting energy in to break those bonds. Then those atoms rearrange to make the products. So we've got two molecules of hydrogen and as these new bonds form, energy is released. So two molecules of hydrogen and then we've got that double bond between the atoms of the oxygen molecule and all the time this is releasing energy. So once again it's this balance between putting energy in to break the bonds and then as the new chemicals form energy is released when the new bonds are formed. So once again you can see that the reaction profile has this loop shape we put energy in to break the bonds so the energy level increases and then when the new bonds form they give off energy and the energy level drops again. Don't forget when we're labeling these reaction profiles, the activation energy is from the level of the reactants all the way up to the top. And the overall energy change is the difference between the energy level of the reactants and the energy level of the products. And we call that overall energy change delta H. So it's really important for your exam that you know how to draw and label a reaction profile for both an endothermic and an exothermic reaction. So at this point, I'd get a piece of scrap paper and a pen, test yourself, can you write down from memory the correct shape of an endothermic or exothermic reaction profile? Can you label the activation energy and the overall energy change? If you can't, re-watch the video, try again until you've absolutely got it correctly. So if you found the video useful, please remember to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've not already done so. Thank you for watching.